What's up guys, my name's Noah, I make music as Hate a Raid, and you are watching The Productive Producer. We're talking side chaining today. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've been noticing that some of the uh, students that I work with, I've noticed some of my students are side chaining, but they're not doing it the right way or effectively. So I wanted to sort of take you through what I look for when I'm side chaining and give you a couple of different ways you could do it because there's more than one way you could do it. And how to identify whether or not you can use your source sample, your kick sample to sidechain, or if you need to use a trigger, an external trigger. And we'll I'll talk about the differences there. But let's get the headphones on and get to work. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a loop, which is very simple, and a couple of different bases down here. <laughs> It sounds fine, but it could probably benefit from a little bit of side chain movement, some of that pumping. Let's set it up how we would normally set it up. A lot of times people will just, they'll just set it up like this. They'll bring the threshold down. They'll turn on the side chain and they're going to say, okay, we're going to say kick. They're like, all right, that's good. My side chain set up, but really it's not really doing very much. If we look over here. This is the view to see how your sidechain is reacting because it's hard to see from right here. Like, yeah, you could see the gain reduction there a little bit, but this will tell you, give you a much better picture. So you see, it's not even dipping really that low. And what we want is we want that to be all the energy to be pulled out and then brought back in once that transient, which we've talked about transients on other videos, uh, but the transient is right here, this little... This little piece right there. You can see when I take away that transient, that little pop is what we're after. We want that. The transient just by itself, that's what we need to target for our sidechain, that little high frequency click. That's what's gonna give us the most control over the sidechain. So let's do that we're gonna we're gonna dial that in and the way we do that in the compressor is using the filter if we bring down the threshold right here which this line right here is the threshold and we don't turn on the filter then we're gonna get all the low end as well as that click that transient and it's gonna make our side chain look like this look which is not gonna sound good listen It's almost like it's being pushed in the background. We don't want that. We want it to be in the fore foreground, but we just want it carved out just a little bit on that transient. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on that EQ and we're gonna turn it on high pass and we're going to bring it all the way up here. And I usually bring it up all the way, but let's just, let's just stick to 10K. Okay, so you see what, it, suddenly went right back down to like those those little tiny notches there. The reason for that is twofold. Number one is we have we don't have our attack down at zero. And that's going to make the compressor react instantly as soon as it gets signal. I mean relatively instantly, right? In 0 0.01 milliseconds, which is pretty dang fast. And then we need to bring that ratio up. And now you see that we're getting that that precise curve. That that's what we want. We want straight down and then curve right back up. And we can control how much pumping we get from the release. Sometimes I see this too, like where guys be like, oh, this is my side chain. I just ducked it out real quick. In our case, since we're making house right now, we want to make we want to have that extra little groove that this side chain is going to add to it. Cause that's what's that's what the purpose of side chain is most of the time. So we are going to keep that that we're gonna bring that release back up. And we can even push it a little further. Let's see. Okay, so that was a good sample that we that we used. We put it in, we turned on the EQ, everything worked just fine. It was all good. But what if our kick sample sounded like this? Let's see what the curve looks like if we use that sample instead of the other one. All same settings, by the way. We're using the exact same settings. We're going to go click the bad trigger. Look at this. That's terrible. It's not it's not giving us much depth. We'd have to like turn it up a bunch. 
And even then, it's not really clean. We're, sick, we're getting like a weird little dip there. We're not really getting a really clean signal, and it's not giving us that tight curve that we need. So what do we do? Well, we can keep this on, which, by the way, I don't really like this kick for this this specific song. Like, don't get me wrong. I love decap samples. I use decap samples all the time. Shout out to decap. Great YouTube channel as well. So, but in this case, we probably need, want to use this really clean, snappy kick. It works better for this type of music. But if I wanted to, like if I were so inclined to use this kick, but I still wanted to have a tight side chain, I would have to switch to a uh, an external trigger or something else, right? And I could go to this. This is a top kick where I just I just clipped out the transient on that top kick there. And that's all we need. So we just route that to the sidechain here, the dedicated trigger here. And now we have a perfectly clean sidechain that we can use, and it pumps exactly the same way as our clean subby kick that we have up here. So now we can use this one with our top kick, and it works just the same as our other, our our really good clean kick. So I also said I would show you guys a couple other ways to sidechain. You can also do this. I've been actually a fan of using this method here. It's been it's been served me pretty well. Just using a utility and and using the gain as the sidechain because I I get a little more control this way and I don't get uh, like I don't get clicks and pops as often. And that works just the same essentially. <laughs> And that one, you don't even need a trigger. You just, you set the automation yourself. And another way, an even more streamlined way to do it is using an auto pan. We're gonna turn up that auto pan just like that. We're gonna bring the phase down to zero. We're gonna select sawtooth here. We're gonna invert it. And we're gonna adjust the shape here like this. And then we're gonna select, instead of Hertz, we're going to select notes and we're gonna go to quarter notes. And now that's gonna give us the same deal as, and now that's gonna give us a really similar effect to the other two methods we had. Granted, it's not as clean as our other two methods, but it's pretty easy if you're just, and especially if you're just making house music or if you just needed to make something uh, pump underneath, if you're not really using the side chain like that to set up a bunch of other stuff to get the side chain working, this is just an easy, an easy fix. So hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing i upload every week twice a week uh one on tuesday and one on friday so uh really glad to have you guys thank you for watching and we'll see you next time peace